Okay, this is about three more weeks before crucifixion and Easter coming up next month. So it is a very appropriate time. Um, I'm going to talk about one major statement that is so powerful utter from the lips of Jesus um, that that really just uh, that, that consolidated a lot of thoughts in Christianity. And the Christians should really take heed of what he said in that statement in Luke chapter 23, the crucifixion verse uh, verse 26 onwards, okay? Um, and, and they led Jesus away and, and they seized Simon of Syrian to carry the cross for him. And verse 27, there followed him a great multitude of the people and women who were mourning and lamenting for him. A great multitude of people mourning, crying, uh, and multitude of people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. Verse 28, but turning, uh, turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. When I read that, I just like choked. And, uh, you know, when he said that, he was actually bleeding badly on his head, forehead. The thorns was already pierced into his skull. And, um, and uh, he was weeped so many times. Um, literally, there was just a uh, um, body with, with uh, whips, the, the marks of the whips and, uh, and, and the blood just flowing from, her bo from his body. And then he had to carry uh, the cross. Now Simon the Syrian helped him to carry the cross. And you know, and, and in this, it's like pu public parade, you know, public shame. And people, great multitude of people follow him, cry and mourning for him. For him. And uh, people with, people just totally confused. This man, whom we thought is the Messiah, uh, raised the dead even, walked on water and uh, opened the eyes of the blind, raised the crippled, cleansed the leopard. What else he can't do? You know, he literally, he calmed the storm. He rebuked the winds, calmed down. Everything he did was supernatural. And he fed 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 men and women with two fish and five loaves of bread, just like that. And his, his speech was full, full of grace. And this man, this man, Jesus Christ, was full of truth and grace. And people loved him. And he loved little children. He said, let the children come to me. For the kingdom of God belongs to people like the little children. Unless you become, unless you become a little children, you can't enter the kingdom of God. I mean, listen to this man, how graceful words flowing out of his mouth, you know. And he's, he's teaching a stunning. Um, the kingdom of God is the mustard seed. The smallest seed eventually become the biggest tree. You know, kingdom of God is always the antidote, antithesis to to what is thing, what is perceived strong, strong in the world. And he is the man. <clears throat> he said, "Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children." Why? <coughs> Verse twenty nine explains. For behold, the days are coming when they will say. Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never, never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills cover us. For they do these things when the wood is green. What will happen when it is dry? Okay. Now this is substantially, this is, uh, Jesus is actually quoting Old Testament Hosea or one of those books saying, you know, this is, this is a time God judging the idolatrous Israel to the point that it was a judgment so bad uh, the people were crying out to the mountains fall upon us fall upon us we can't take this judgment this judgment from God anymore it's just we'd rather just die now you know there's a such horrific so I want to bring a couple of things here number one the end time judgment is going to be so horrific for those people without God who rejected God reject the divinity of Christ and uh, rejected his redemption, rejected his um, his his, uh, his his him as a Messiah, the Savior of the world. 
I mean, the judgment is going to be absolutely one heck of a horrific incident that lasts forever and ever. The wrath of God is so strong because the grace of God is so strong. Folks, see, do you see the contrast? God is not justified to pour out such great wrath on the day of judgment if he had not already poured out such great grace on the cross. Because of such horrific thing coming, Jesus was prepared to die a horrific death to save us for the sake of saving us. And he opened it up the opportunity for us, but many people rejected him today. But many people have received him. The call is yours. The call is ours. There is not going to be a, you know, sort of, uh, I tried, I don't want it, you know. You just have to believe and trust in it. Okay, this first is horror. Fall upon me. The second thing is, when Jesus said, Women of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves. You know, the man is speaking. This is God's man, actually. The man is speaking about because he sees what is coming. What is happening to him now is nothing compared to what is coming in the end time, the eschatological age. You know, when, when the end time comes, it's going to be a thousand times, a million times more horrific than what you see on the cross. And But even what Jesus experienced on the cross is already absolutely horrendous and horrific to any sane person. They could have drawn, the crucifixion could have driven a man to insane, die on the spot or something. Excruciating pain. But Jesus, you say, weep not for me. That phrase, weep not for me, don't, do not weep for me, is life transforming. I believe that he could able to suck it up, endure that, and turn around and say, weep for yourselves. He looks for no pity. Got that? He looks for no pity. In fact, he shows his sympathy, compassion to other people, to us, even at the point of anguish, suffering, just literally hours before his death. He was already half dead. Physically, he was just drenched, emotionally drenched, publicly shamed, saliva on his body, blood all over his body, the shame and pain he went through. He could take that. It is amazing. I don't think anybody with any normal human ability would be able to take that. It is astounding. It's beyond human capacity. You know, you can't say he's God at the moment because God doesn't suffer this way. He's fully man. So I'm just saying that he sees the glorious future. This is fine. He's going to go through it. That's why he said, woman, don't weep for me. Don't cry for me. Almost reminds me of the song, don't cry for me, Argentina. You know, don't cry for me. Don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. Number three is people must see. Which is the real number one. Jesus is saying that you see what is horrific on me now. But what you don't see is the horrific, even much more horrific things on yourselves. If you don't repent and, and put your trust in what I'm doing now. Why I'm going to the cross for you. I'm going to resurrect don't worry about me. Three days later, I'm back to normal. I'm back to health. I'm back to fully human and fully God again. As usual, he's still fully God. Never stop being God. And in three days time, his humans going to come back to life. And he's going to proclaim the gospel, empower his disciples and go back to heaven. He said, that's what can happen. Three more days. Give me three more days. It shall be done. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus told the, 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 the guy that told the, the her wants to arrest him and will kill him. He said, go and tell that fox, destroy this temple. I'll raise it up in three days. This is precisely what it means. He is speaking about himself. He is the temple. 
three more days. Don't wait for me. Weep for yourself, folks. Amen.